All right. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to the stream. Hope you guys are having a wonderful Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. All right. Hello, 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 hello. Okay. Well, we got some people here, so let's get this party started. Uh, just remember, if you guys have any questions or anything, uh, just throw it up in the chat. Um, and I am uh, I'm here to help. All right. Okay, so we will get started with uh, some questions. And again, feel free to chime in if you... What's up, Somi? How are you today? Uh, my sound is really low. Is it really low for other people? Testing, testing. How's the sound? What's up, everyone? Hi. Sound is really low. Okay. All right. Is that any better? Test, test, test. Uh, test. How's that? How's that? Is that better? Ooh, that's not really doing anything. Um, I guess just get this closer. Hello? Okay, here we go. All right, well. Yep. Get my little arm thing here. Come on. I'm going to lock in. All right, there we go. Okay, cool. Lower this down just a little bit. All right, here we go. I guess that'll that'll have to do. This thing does not like to lock. This section doesn't like to lock. All right. Just that bad boy. Okay, how's that? Okay, well, if it's... All right, how's it now? Is it better now? Let me know if it's better now. I got this right in front of my face. Am I using the right... I should be using the right thing. Let me... Audio input. Oh, that might be what it is. Okay. All right. How's that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't think it was using my my microphone. I think it was doing some other random nonsense. Okay. Small problems out of the way. No worries. All in a day's work. Okay. So let's get after it. We do have quite a bit to cover today. Um, and we want to make sure that we do this in a timely manner. Okay, uh, so, ch -ch -ch, regard you asked the question, uh, can you explain the difference between CS and NS? There's no difference. Um, the CS and the NS are always the same thing, uh, because remember, uh, in classical conditioning, you have your unconditioned stimulus and you have your unconditioned response, so you have that naturally occurring relationship you see really good food, uh, or let me give you a different example. Um, uh, there's a flash of light that's really bright. What is your, so that's the unconditioned stimulus, there's a flash of light. Your unconditioned response to that would be to flinch your eyes, okay? Um, but let's say that before that flash of light uh, happened, um, you know, your parents walked into the room uh, because that's how they woke you up every morning is that in the morning they walked in and they turned on the lights That's what my dad did when I was a kid um, And so you would like, you know, you shrivel up or whatever you you'd flinch um, and so the um, The part of the neutral stimulus becoming the conditioned stimulus is that acquisition piece so um, we do this multiple times over and over and over again. Your parents walk in the room and flip on the light, and that's what's blind. That that's what blinds you. So your neutral stimulus uh, becomes your conditioned stimulus. That your parent walking into the room, and so what might end up happening is you're kind of in the middle of the day. Your parents like walk into your room, and you might be like, ah, cover your eyes, even though it's like the middle of the day, nothing's going on. So that is that's the difference between NS and CS. Give me a thumbs up or something, regard if that makes sense to you. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right, good. I 
did shave. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Old, old students. Yeah, I did shave. I know it's, it happened. Uh, it's, uh, it feels good. I mean, it's, I, I definitely feel wind on my face, um, now, but, uh, we're trying new things, you know, we're growing, developing, you know, getting through and trying, trying new styles. I don't know if I like it. I mean, I'm just so used to the other way. I don't mind it. It's kind of the same. I don't know. You know, you, you do something, you think it's going to change your life and then you're just like, oh, right. That's still my face. It's whatever. Okay, good. Yes. Fixed interval is what we are looking for. Excellent. 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 Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Uh, keep the questions coming if you have them. I've got more for you. Uh, let's see. All right, pay attention to this question. This question, uh, don't don't get yourself uh, tripped up. Oh yeah, Ronald. Yeah, go T next, hundred percent, or just a mustache, or just a mustache. I have a friend who like waxes it, and so he gets. What's up, Amal? Welcome back, girl. Um, yeah, I know Amal. Yeah. I know uh, we, we just talked about it. Oh, TQL. That's a great idea. I should go bald. I might have to do that. Yeah. Go bald. Yep. Let's do it. Let's just, uh, just hairless, just totally hairless. I'll shave my eyebrows. I can, I'll keep my eyelashes. Those are, those are helpful. Yeah, I know. Good, good guys. Yeah. Iris, 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 Iris. Very good. Yep. So this is, the so when we're talking about the regulation we're talking about that muscle move, movement so this is what is allowing more or less light into the eyes so the iris is definitely what i'm looking for very very good okay um so wait on this one i've got some um i've got answer choices for you so don't answer this just yet let me let me put some answer choices up Okay, there you go. Uh, I am, if I shave my eyebrows, no one's touching them. I mean, or I'm not gonna draw on them. What's the, what is the point of not having eyebrows and then drawing them on? That's silly, absolutely silly. If you're gonna have no eyebrows, you gotta go for broke. You gotta, you gotta stick with the no, eye, no eyebrow plan. I mean, that's just, that's just basic. That's like, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. So. Oh, okay. I see what you're talking about, TQ. Yeah, you could, yeah. More, you could, I could do, oh, I could do like fire. Like, uh, like, uh, what you would, on Hot Wheels or whatever. Just like little, little fire going to the side. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I think that would be great. Yep. Okay. All right, so there we go. All right, so we've got some we got some discussion here. Okay, so let's go back. What is the difference between a primary and a secondary reinforcer? So dogs are often used in airports to detect explosive materials and or narcotics. Uh, their trainers teach them to smell out certain substances by rewarding them with treats before correctly identifying a substance. What kind of reinforcer is being used? The reinforcer is a treat. Reinforcer is some sort of like piece of candy or well, hopefully not a piece of candy, but like a little bit of meat. So this is, this is a primary reinforcer. They're not talking about praise. They're not talking about high fives. They're not talking about a pay raise. They're talking about food. So this is a primary reinforcer. Remember primary reinforcers are things that we know are innately good um, and secondary reinforcers we have to learn. Oh, Hank Green. Oh man, if I if I am being compared in any manner to uh, the green family. I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I mean, I need some glasses. Hank, Hank wears glasses. So I think they both wear glasses, but yeah, I definitely need some glasses. I'll take that. Yep. I'll take that. I'm pretty, I'm pretty, I'm pretty good with that, uh, with that comparison. I am, I'm not on the same level, but we're getting there. Okay. Uh, that is an old question. All right, here we go. Next question. All right.
Exam tomorrow, I feel, should be fairly easy for you guys. This is like, this is one of those, I really like unit three and four because the, most of the items are pretty, um, like cut and dry. You just have to, <clears throat> there's some stuff you have to kind of like piece together, but otherwise it's fairly simple. Yep, good, 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 good. Yep, sensory adaptation. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Throw me some questions if you guys have questions. This is good. Yep. Good, 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 good. All right. Here we go. Next question. Mm. Okay, yeah. So um I want to Okay. So let me try to clarify the difference between latent and observational learning. The correct answer here is observational learning. Um However, when I'm looking over cuz this is from an old test, um uh, there is no uh, latent learning is not an example. Okay, so observational learning 100% is when you just observe someone else and they do a thing and you learn that thing. Latent learning is you learn something unconsciously that later on, hmm, you could say it's both. You could say it's either. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I, I think it would be, uh, it would be either. So, um, technically on this one, it's observational because that's what the answer choice is, but, uh, uh, I like both. Yeah. Latent learning is just as, is just as good. You would look, you would look for either one. Yeah. I would be because, because the, okay. Without any explicit training from adults, many eight year old children know how to turn on the ignition key in order to start their parents' cars. Yeah. You could say that's latent or observational. It just depends on which one comes up because it it's exemplifying both. So good, 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 good. Well done, well done. All right, uh, let's see. Okay, so this one is, has some answer choices, so let's do that. All right, so here are the answer, here are your answer choices. All right, there you go. There are your answer choices. <laughs> uh, that's uh, yeah. No, I feel you. I yeah. I'm all. I got you on that. It's not gonna stop me. But yeah. Good. Yeah. Easy peasy. Good. 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 Yep. Good. Yep. The answer is a good, 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 good. All right. Next question. 
Uh, where does the optic nerve leave the eye? Where does the optic nerve leave the eye? All right, hey, come on, people. I've been throwing questions at you. I need I need some questions on your side. I've only had like two. What y'all got? Can I re-explain it? Generalization. Yes. Yes, I can. Okay. So generalization. So this is dealing with um, neutral stimuli, neutral and conditioned stimuli. So uh, yes. Uh, okay. So um, what is happening is your you have a conditioned stimulus. You have learned like the classical conditioning process has happened. So you have a conditioned stimulus and a conditioned response. So then, uh, yes, yeah, Sophia, I can, I'll come back to that. Uh, so then what ends up happening is you interact with another neutral stimulus, okay? That is similar enough to your conditioned stimulus, the one that you already have, um, that you're still influenced by it. Okay, so let's say that, um, uh, okay, you have, uh, okay, so let's just do food and hunger. So um, uh, around, uh, you see some food, you become hungry. Okay, that's your naturally occurring relationship. Okay, however, every time you go to lunch, um, the, a, a bar, like, a Bob Dylan song comes on. Some muse, some type of music comes on, okay, and uh, you hear that music, and so uh, you know, and that's happening every time. So you have uh, the process of acquisition, the Bob Dylan music, and uh, um, and food become paired. So now Bob Dylan has become a conditioned stimulus, and your conditioned response is to be is to become hungry. So anytime you hear Bob Dylan music, you're all of a sudden like, oh, hey, I'm kind of hungry. I'd like to eat something. Bob Dylan's an artist, so he's an old guy. Okay, uh, so then let's say that a song from another old, you know, artist that sounds similar to him comes on. And I, I wish I knew someone that sounded similar to him or whatever. But uh, a song that is similar to his music comes on. You, if you then became hungry that would be generalization because this neutral stimulus over here was close enough to your conditioned stimulus that you got a reaction and that is generalization okay uh regard let me know if that uh, if that helps you out uh sophia what you need to know about the ear uh i kind of just walked you through how the how the um ear works or what the process of hearing is. So you'll need to know that. You'll need to know about waves and how they travel. You'll need to know about uh, the different parts of the ear and what they do, what their functions are. Um, yeah, and then that's that'll be good. That, that's, that should be all you know need to know about hearing. Um, uh, Namisha, the olfactory bulb, uh, that is the uh, part of your um, sense of smell. That processes your sense of smell. Um, okay, a few questions, Millet. Do we need to know a lot about aversive conditioning and instinctive drift? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you don't need to know anything about instinctive drift, uh, but aversive conditioning might pop up. On the AP exam, I've never even is that is that a question that you pulled from the book? Legitimately, I've have never heard of instinctive drift. Is that instinctive drift? Alternately known as instinctual drift. Thanks for that. Is the tendency of an animal to revert to unconscious and automatic behavior that interferes with learned behavior from operant conditioning? Huh. Neat. Hmm, okay. Uh, I've never, uh, that's the first time I've ever heard of that. So yeah, I can explain retinal disparity. What's up, Paola? Okay, good. All right. Um, do we need to know about specific psychologists and like the, uh, so so many, the major thing, uh, Cassie, I'm going to come back to, uh, your question here in a second. So the main thing with the different, um, uh, let's see, let me. I'm just going to put up another question for those of you who don't need this. Yeah, uh, Bill, yeah, I've never 
I no clue. That like that's Miller. That's that's the whole thing with these like AP exams. Like I can oh I can teach you a bunch of stuff, and then sometimes they just throw in this random thing that we've never heard of. And again, if you remember my conversation from the beginning of the year, um, they purposely throw in impossible questions like that, um, things that we've never heard of, to keep the curve from going too crazy. Like they don't want people to score like a hundred percent on it. So they throw in impossible questions. Okay. So, um, here is a, um, oh my gosh, you guys have so many questions. This is wonderful. This is what I need from you guys. You guys got to ask me these questions. You should do this in class too. Hmm. Um, okay. So let's just start from the top. Uh, oh, so silly, sorry. So specific psychologist, you just need to, like Albert Bandura, you've got to know his name and you've got to know the study. Uh, Wolfgang Kohler, um, oftentimes what ends up happening is whenever we talk about insight learning, the name Wolfgang Kohler pops up. And so if you know both of those things, if you forget one, you might remember the other one. So like you might forget, wait, what was insight learning? But I remember Wolfgang Kohler and his study. And so you like, it's a better way of uh, pairing items. Later on, when we talk about memory, we'll talk about uh, what's known as chunking, where you want to pair items together and it helps you remember things uh, better. So um, yeah, so that like to answer your question, you, yes, you need to know about all of them and what they did. Okay. Regarding the one class period where we had to watch a lecture made lecture by ourselves, what parts do we need to watch again? Um, you, any videos, I don't even know what you're talking about, Carolyn. Any of the, it would just be any of the YouTube streams that we've done on unit three or four. I'm really not sure what you're talking about, Carolyn. Was it an outside video that I showed you? You got to clarify for me, Carolyn. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure. Uh, what is the difference between sensory adaptation and selective attention? Okay. So sensory adaptation is, uh, let's see. Um, okay. So I've got a fan back here and I'm going to turn it on. All right. So right now, Oh, geez. No, that's terrible. Okay. You can hear the, the sound of the, the thing. Okay. So right now I can hear the fan in the background. Um, and if it was blowing on me, I'd, I'd feel that too. In about five to 10 minutes, I'm not going to hear that thing anymore. It's going to fade off into the background. Um, and that's sensory adaptation. After a period of time, we just stop paying, we stop paying attention to all the stuff around us. Now, selective attention ties into that in a sense where it is our ability to focus on one thing and kind of exclude everything else. But sensory adaptation is specifically talking about like, I noticed this thing and then I stopped noticing it after a while because I filtered out. Selective attention is the specific idea that I have the ability to focus on one thing and tune everything out. So th they work together. Like it, it's a concept that kind of talks about, um, different parts of the same thing um so you're 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 in the same ballpark when you're when you're looking at those two things does that help you Isla? uh do we need to know the system of how sound travels through the ear like all the parts yeah yes you do Miller. you you should be able to kind of walk through that um so let's just go through it very quickly so sound travels in waves remember um, the uh, frequency of the sound tells you its pitch the amplitude tells you how loud it is um, it uh, is funneled in through the pinna, the outside of the ear. It uh, bounces around inside the auditory canal. It hits the eardrum and the eardrum begins to vibrate. And that process, what is that process of sound waves turning into some into vibrations? Transduction. Remember one energy type turning into another. I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to wait. I don't need this. Okay. Um, transduction is the turning of one energy source into another. And so those vibrations go through the bones of the middle ear. They hit the cochlea. The cochlea is a fluid filled sac with our, um, hair or receptor cells or the hair cells inside of it. The, um, cochlea begins to vibrate. The 
fluid inside the cochlea begins to ripple. The hair cells in there, in there kind of dance around or whatever, pick up that in information, send it on uh, through the uh, auditory nerve and to the temporal lobe of the brain. And that's how you hear. Okay, cool. All right. Good, good, good. Uh, yes, so the uh, question is positive, or the answer to the question is positive punishment. Very good. Medieval proverb notes that uh, a burnt child dreads the fire. Uh, the burning would be a example of positive punishment. Very, very good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, still catching up to you guys. Still answering questions. Keep them coming. Love it. Um, can you explain perceptual constancy and perceptual adaptation? Yes, I can. Hold on one second. Okay. So. Okay. So perceptual constancy. Okay. Uh, I don't have a tennis mm. Hold on. I do have a tennis ball. All right. Hold on. Give me like three seconds. I'm going to go get a tennis ball. Teddy's not going to be, all right, Teddy's not going to be as docile now that he see. oh, he doesn't see the tennis ball yet. We'll try to hide for him. Okay, so perceptual constancy. Okay, so perceptual constancy is this idea that our, our brain helps us understand some of the things that we see. And so you are very used to seeing a tennis ball. You know what the color is. Um, you've seen this a million times, okay? So this is very bright. See, Teddy's, Teddy's like, I know what that is. Okay, so even in different situations, we are still going to see this fairly well. So I'm gonna turn my light off, okay? And the end result is that the light has completely changed in this room, but the tennis ball really hasn't. Like you still see this as very, very bright. When I put this out here in front of me, you still see this as very, very bright. And I mean, I'm pulling this away. It almost looks like it glows in the dark. Doesn't matter what is going on, but there's not a lot, there's not enough light in here to reflect this brightness. Remember that your cones are the parts of your eye that reflects or that picks up light and it's not very good in the darkness teddy's like we there's a ball why aren't we playing okay and so what's happening here is this is your brain this is perceptual constancy there are certain things that we just know what it is and so your brain is filling in all of this color it is not reflecting this much color yeah teddy we're not this is here i'll throw the, i'll put this over there if you want to chew on it but we're not we're not playing with it Paul. Right, I'll take this off. It was cute before, but yeah, we play. We played. We took a walk. We are not playing fetch. There's not a universe where I'm playing fetch with you right now. Okay, you're gonna go take it in the other room. Okay. All right. Okay. So that is uh, perceptual constancy. Okay. So perceptual adaptation. Uh, is just this idea, there's this video you can watch where a guy like builds like these uh, goggles that flip the world upside down and uh, it's inverted goggles. And the idea is that you can, you could actually live a perfectly normal life if you flip the world upside down. Like it would take you a little bit to get used to, but you would, you would be able to live that life. And so perceptual adaptation is that when your if your vision ever changed for some major reason you would be able to adapt and live a normal life yep there you go that is perceptual adaptation okay give me a thumbs up if that if that is good uh can you explain what is is cs and cr uh remember paola the cs is the condition stimulus and the cr is the condition response so when we were talking about um ivan pavlov the condition stimulus is, so uh, you have the naturally occurring um, relationship, unconditioned stimulus, the food, unconditioned response, the dog salivates, 
and then Ivan Pavlov walks in. He's the neutral stimulus, but then Ivan Pavlov keeps walking in and walking in and walking in. And so the neutral stimulus through acquisition becomes the conditioned stimulus. And why is the dog salivating? It is not because of the food. It's because Ivan Pavlov walks in. So that's your conditioned response. Okay. Uh, we didn't need to watch a whole YouTube video that you posted because we didn't have time to finish the lecture. Oh, oh, uh, that was just an example. I uh, That was just like a... Uh, you don't have to watch this, but that was a, like, if you want to know a little bit more about it, that's what that was. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, absolute threshold for those of you who answer the question. Here's another question. All right. Um, all right, trying to catch up. Amal's helping me out. Thanks, girl. Uh, can you explain the difference between change in intentional blindness? Oh my gosh. Amal, is that, how, is that how you, is that, is that one of the ways that you're, it's one of those life hacks you got? Watch, try, try watching, uh, what is it? The crash course videos. I, I can imagine trying to watch the crash course videos at two times the speed. Oh my goodness. Those guys talk so fast. Um, Amal, you just, you just have so many this this is this is how take notes people this is how you become a better person just do what amal's doing all right um okay yeah the difference between change and intentional blindness easy enough um this is all due to selective attention change blindness is you are not seeing the things that are changing right in front of you um and intentional blindness is uh you are not noticing the things that have been there for a very long time so if i asked you to walk around your house and, or to tell me like 10 specific uh, like if i asked you if i walked around your house and asked you like what's the color of this room um how many tiles on the floor are in this room or how many blah 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 what is this what is this you would probably get a lot of those wrong even though you walk around them every single day they're not things that you're paying attention to. That's intentional blindness. Change blindness is if like I, you know, when I walked out to go get the tennis ball, I like changed my jacket color. And so now I'm wearing like a yellow jacket. Um, and because you guys were focused on other things, you didn't notice uh, the change, something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, the cocktail party in effect and change and selective attention are talking about the same thing. So it's like you have selective attention is this idea that we focus in on on one thing and and the cocktail party effect is kind of talking about this selective attention thing. It's saying you do selectively attend to things ignoring everything else. However, your brain is still processing all of these things on the outside and so when information comes out like if someone says your name like so the cocktail party effect is is specifically talking about um oh no i just lost my spot uh okay um so the cocktail party effect is specifically talking about like you recognizing your name in the middle of all this stuff that's going on um okay so um so yeah uh, that's the cocktail party effect. You are able to pick out information in the crowd uh, when things are being said or like your name or whatever, uh, even though you're focused and paying attention to something else. Teddy is uh, giving up on the ball. He's not showing on anymore. Okay, good. Yes, absolute threshold. Thank you. That is Teddy. All right. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm falling behind. All right, good. Depth perception is correct. All right, hey boys and girls, let's remember we this is this is here for educational purposes, so don't say dumb stuff. It's no point. All right. Oh my gosh, Sophia, it is fun watching Crash Course at two times. That's crazy. Weber's Law, yes, Wilson, I can. Okay, let me give. All right, I'm I'm actually all caught up. All right, I'm I'm with you guys here. All right, let's go through. Do, 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 do. I'm gonna give another question. Okay, Wilson oh, Weber's law. Okay, so Weber's law is talking about the difference threshold. So remember, the difference threshold is 
your ability to recognize the difference between two items 50% of the time. And so Weber's law is saying that in order for you to recognize the difference in something, the change in something, um, it has to hit a minimum percentage. So, um, so Weber's law is talking about like these specific percentages. So uh, again, when we talk about weight, um, when weight changes, um, like it has to change 2% in order for you to notice it. Um, that's why, you know, the example was you put a hundred pennies on your hand, uh, you hold a hundred pennies in your hand. I take one away. Can you notice the difference? No. If I take two away, you'll likely notice the difference. Um, and then, uh, what is it? Light is like 8% change and tone is like 0.03% change, something to that effect. So that's Weber's law. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Watching videos at t like, yeah, hmm. I know, uh, Mr. Kane, Mr. Kane reads books at, uh, like, so he listens to audio books like I do, and he listens to them at a faster percentage. I don't know if he listens to it two times faster, but he listens to it faster. Um, and I just, I, I can't do that. I, it's just like, well, I don't know. Oh, dude, I know. Wilson, I was, I was like, I, I was, I was going through my brain pan. Uh, when I saw Wilson, I was like, hold on, I don't have any Wilsons this year. So, uh, yeah, welcome back. It's, uh, it's been, it's been some time. It's been some time. Yep. We, we haven't gotten to memory or decaying yet for those guys. So, and it's been a while. Life going okay? On the other side of, uh, on the other side of things? All right, let's see. Uh, here we go. Got next question up. All right, we're doing great, guys. Lots of good questions. You guys have been doing really good with the answers. Good. Yes, people. Yes, yes, yes. Good, 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 good. Oh, Wilson. You the man, Wilson. We'll keep you around. Well, I mean, you're gone now, but I appreciate it, bud. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the class. Token economy, good, good, good. All right, here we go, next question. What is the difference between token economy and negative reinforcement in the stickers example? First grade teacher gives students stickers when they perform well. If they earn five stickers in one day, they are exempt from homework. Oh, um, this, you could, you can use, token economies are used for reinforcement. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how, how it, like it could be positive or negative. Um, it is more common for token economies to be used for positive reinforcement, but you can also use them for negative reinforcement like they do in the example where they, you know, you, you give them, you know, you earn, you earn this thing and then you can turn them in to, you know, have less homework or something like that. So that, that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine. Um, oh, goodness, guys. I meant to, here, let me put, let me put answer choices up, up here for you. That is what I meant to do. Um, there you go. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yes, I can go over proximity, similarity, continuity, closure, and grouping. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Um, uh, remember, uh, Paola, negative reinforcement is you take away something bad to reinforce the behavior. So um, you... Um, uh, you play on a sports team and the if the team wins their next game coach is going to call off practice like you don't have to go to practice because no one wants to go to practice and run around and do all that stuff or whatever so that would be negative reinforcement okay the correct answer here is closure it is closure okay cool all right so yes let me go over this okay so Remember that these are all simple, just gestalt principles, and the gestalt principles are trying to explain or show us how our brain takes all this information that's out in the world and condenses them down so that it's easier for us to understand, okay? So that is all gestalt psychology is all about. So some of the concepts, grouping, proximity, similarity, continuity, closure, um, is all about doing that thing. Okay, so proximity is things that are closer together are considered together. So when you like have a bunch of lines, if two of those lines are slightly together, we'll see those two things as paired. Uh, same with similarity. Um, you know, things that look similar go together. Um, so, uh, you know, we had the example of the triangle, circle, triangle. And so you saw them as vertical rather than horizontal because it was all triangles all circles, all triangles, instead of like triangle, circle, triangle, triangle, circle, triangle. Um, continuity, uh, we like things to flow. So this is the example where you have the line and then you have the like the line, the, the wave going through it. And it's like, are these half circles or is this one continuous line? We want things to flow. Uh, closure is all the examples of like, um, they only um, do like color in part of it. And the other part is, um, and, and your brain kind of like finishes off the rest. So if you look up, if you just Google the WHO, the World Health Organization, right? Oh no, is that what it is? No. What is it? There's like uh, the panda bear. Uh, you could just write, just type in closure examples. And there's like a, a billion of them. What is it? What's this one with the panda bear? Uh, the WWF. What's the WWF? I can't remember what the WF. Yeah. So if you you could do WWF into Google Images, and there's the there's a panda bear, but there's not really a panda bear. Your brain is just kind of like sorting that stuff uh, stuff in there. So, okay, um, cool. Uh, and then grouping, uh, grouping is like 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 if you get like random lines and things and circles like the ideas like uh, the dumbbells is what i'm thinking of is you know you don't see those as separated things you think you see things that are connected as part of one another and so our brain tries to like uh, make those things make sense so that's grouping okay uh bruh uh no not the world wrestling Hey, bro, bro, get out of here, bro. Like, I don't need you here. I don't know what you're doing. Uh, but uh, you are not welcome, my friend. Uh, okay. All right. Sorry about that. I was uh, explaining things and did not see uh, doofus. So there's nothing... Nothing better to do. Come on, man. Go go somewhere else. Okay, let's see. I'm all the best thing is just just to ignore. It's 
So sorry, I was uh, attempting to uh, I was attempting to get rid of it as fast. Uh, that's the that's the 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 problem with uh, um, answering questions is sometimes uh, if some some dummy is on here trying to be funny, I I can't I don't see him because I'm like higher up on the chat. I only see like ten messages per thing. So my apologies. Uh, all right, let's see. What is, if we are B day, is our test on Friday? Your your test is I is either today or tomorrow or tomorrow or Friday. So your test is. Where's my brain? What is tomorrow? Tomorrow's A day. Yeah. So your test is on Friday. Whew. Um, I mean, they just come in with different accounts or whatever. So, yeah. Like, it, the the problem is, is it's so easy just to hop back in with any, with literally anything else. So, whatever. Whatever. All right, let me put up another question. Here we go. It's like, man, don't you, like, you could literally be doing anything else. Oh, Cassidy. Yes, I can. Oh, thank you for, I am so sorry. I got, uh, here we go. Um, let's say, okay, so retinal disparity. Okay, so remember, retinal disparity is simply talking about um, your ability to, your brain's ability to process depth by using both of your eyes. So it remember your ability to see the world in three dimensions is a part of, is a brain thing. It's not an eyeball thing. Your eyes see the world in two dimensions. Okay. So your, the retinal disparity is doing this. Okay. So this, uh, it's hard for me to see. Okay. So if you just turn yourself a little bit to the side and look at the screen. So one of the ways that your brain Sorry, this is my foot with my blanket. I'll get out of the way of Teddy. That's terrible. Okay, so your the way that your brain processes the distance of something, one of the ways it does that is your eyes have take two different pictures of the world. Your right eye sees the world, see like has a viewpoint, sees the world. Your left eye sees the world. And so what your brain does is it takes that image, takes those two images and slaps them together. So we see the world in one thing. Okay, so the the retinal disparity is the your eyes you're, you're getting two different images and there's a distance in between both of your eyes and so one of the ways that your brain knows how far something is away is that the image like my computer screen the camera is right now closer to my right eye than my left eye but it's also still in view of both of it and so it is taking that information and helping me perceive, okay, how far away is something? So when, so retinal disparity is the only binocular cue, only cue that you get um, with both of your eyes, okay? So remember all the rest of them are monocular cues. So like interposition, relative height, relative clarity. Okay, 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 okay. Amol also gets into internet fights. Amol, is there anything you don't do? Uh... Oh, and a Ben Shapiro. I can imagine Ben Shapiro comment section could get a little bit weird. They use the same phrase. What do they say? Bruh, a bunch? Whatever. Okay. Premac principle is correct. Do we know how to label the part? Uh, okay, so I was looking at the exam. Um, there, you you never need to know. Like, I'm not going to put a picture up and just be like label this part. Um, but you need to know the function of the eyes and knowing where they are and where the ear is could help you. Um, <laughs> uh, 
It's okay, Noel. We are uh, not a bad. You're okay. I don't know what you mistypoed, but I'm sure it wasn't too bad. Oh well, nothing wrong with uh, nothing wrong with uh, educated discussion and having a disagreement with someone. Uh, ben Shapiro is a very good um, debater. I would I would be absolutely terrified to debate that guy. He is ah, oh, Brubra is back. Oh, Brubra. Come on, man. Oh, he's uh, he's trying to get back on, but he's been like, "What you doing, bro? What you doing? Just go away." All right. <laughs> I have never been mature, but. Uh... You know. Yes, I'm. Uh, what's the difference between figure and ground and grouping? Um, figure and ground is talking is is almost like talking about selective attention. It's talking about how uh, you're welcome, Oxen. Uh, it's talking about how your brain processes your world. So, figure and ground. Remember, if the figure is your focus, what you are paying attention to, what you're like directly looking at or listening to um, and then ground is all of the other things in the background everything that's happening um, behind the scenes um, the things that you are not focused on okay all right cool all right more questions Sleeping is overrated, right, Alma? Totally overrated. You got other things to do. Uh, what happened? Oh, it all went away. Okay. Oh, nope. Oh, boy. All right, hold on. I think my... Okay, there we go. All right, it's... There we go. Ah, uh, almost. That happens. Oh, Calvin. Welcome back, bud. How are you? Good to hear from you. Hope you're doing all right. Well, you know, you're uh, you're you you can unsubscribe whenever you want, but uh, just remember. Uh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't stay subscribed to me if I wasn't in my, in my class anymore. But uh, I will. I'll be absolutely devastated if you leave. I I just need my subscribers so bad. Good perception. Um, well, I'm pretty sure that Ben Shapiro has not made that sort of, uh, here we go, that sort of claim. Well, I don't know. I don't listen to him. I stay, if, if, it, if, if it's political, I stay away from it. So I, I, I'm actually backing out of this conversation. I don't even want to talk about it. I got, I got better things to do with my life. Oh, Calvin, I know. I literally just shaved like a week ago. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll I'll think about I'll think about growing back my beard. No promises. No promises. Is that is that is that uh grounds for unsubscribing? As uh, I didn't come back to see a beardless Mr. Monk. Yeah, no, I. Uh, it, 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 if if you must, if you must. Good, late in learning. Good, 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 good. All right. All right, here we go. Keep going. Let's let's ro let's roll through some questions. Let's get let's get them out there. 
Yeah. No, I agree, Calvin. I agree. Oh, man. I was talking. You know, it's funny, Calvin. We were talking. Coach Diaz and I were talking about you the other day. Um, we were talking about the soccer team. And um, this was like a week or two ago. And we were just like, you know what? We don't have like the guys on our bench are just like like more of a quiet group they're not like rowdy and rambunctious and uh and uh so we were like talking about last year's group and some of the guys that were on the bench that would like get loud and like cheer and stuff and your name came up with uh it was you it was momo and then someone and then someone else but you were like you were up there it's just like yeah and calvin would always just like cheer and call and like tell people man on and all that stuff and and we were we were we've been missing it we've been missing it so keep it up bud good uh, we appreciate you we appreciate you all right what do we got here good yep perceptual set good 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 okay Excellent. Yep, perceptual set is what I'm looking for. Yeah, uh, insight learning is just that aha moment. It's just that um, you, uh, it's just that light bulb moment or whatever, where you just like know the answer to something. You're looking at a, a test question and you're just like, uh, and then it comes to you. So for a lot of you, that's what's going to happen on this question right here where you're just like sitting there and then boom, comes to you. Uh, and then latent learning is learning that happens when there is, it's unconscious and it, it's learning that's happening even though there's no, you don't need it. Like uh, you don't need to know it for the next like thing. Um, and so, um, or it, it's like not important at that moment. You're not being reinforced for the behavior. It's something that you learn that's kind of like in the background that pops up later on where you're just like, oh, here we go. And uh, and you get to use it. Okay, good, 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 good. Uh, yeah, Amar, so far for um, what learning and sensation and perception, I haven't missed anything. Uh, we've covered everything. So these are two of the smaller units. Um, so, so far uh, that's all that's all been covered. Um, but yeah, for the other stuff, I will. Yep. 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 All right. Yeah. No problem. Yep. Good. Omel. Yep. I was, uh, uh, that was the example I used earlier or that, you know, that's my, that's my, that's my go-to example. All right, here we go. Okay, so we're we're running on on time. So uh, this is my last question. If you guys, what's up, Maha? Uh, if you guys have any questions, you gotta throw them out there. Welcome back, been 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 a minute, been a minute. Any last questions? Throw them out there. I'm glad they stick. They don't stick for everyone. It doesn't always happen. Where are we getting intentional blindness? Dribble was in the middle of looking at dinner menu at their favorite restaurant. Some of the other restaurant goers were giving Dribble strange looks. Dribble never noticed them because the intense focus on the dinner menu. Um, that would probably be more... No, that's not intentional blindness. Yeah. Um, I would almost say it's more change blindness than anything else. No, that's just selective attention. There's not enough to be... Yeah, there's not enough there for intentional or change blindness. That's selective attention. Yeah. There'll be... Like, if it's... 
if it's intentional blindness or change blindness, they'll be very specific about like this thing changed or this thing has been there for a long time type stuff. They'll be, they'll be more specific. Yeah. Sorry, Calvin. Sorry, Calvin. Yep. That's okay. You can, uh, it's good to, good to have you checking in anyways. Yeah, I can, I can explain fixed ratio. Okay, so remember when we are doing ratio schedules, uh, we are just talking about uh, the person does the behavior a certain number of times. Okay, so we're not doing it every single time. We're doing it, you know, after a certain, certain number. So a fixed ratio schedule is you do the behavior X amount of times and then you give them a reward. It's not every time, it's X amount. Uh, so... Um, you know, I am, uh, trying to teach Teddy to, uh, drop the ball when I tell him to. And so every time he does, every third time he does the behavior, I give him attention. I give him a treat, something like that. That would be, um, that would be a fixed ratio schedule. Every three times he does the behavior, I give him a treat. Okie dokie. All right. Well, we are, uh, we're good. Um, if you guys have no more questions, I am getting the heck out of here. Uh, and we're good to go. So thank you so much for hopping on. I hope this was uh, helpful to you guys. Uh, don't forget, uh, tomorrow, if you're taking your exam to be ready to take the exam and then, uh, Friday. So yeah, good luck. Make sure you get a good night's rest tonight. Have a good breakfast tomorrow morning and uh we'll we'll get after it tomorrow thanks again for hopping on and we will see you guys later uh oh i'm not ready here we go end stream all right bye guys